As always, I hope it gets better for you. And welcome to another Friday Night Live Q&A. Where you can ask me and the community anything about keeping freshwater fish, shrimp, plants, or whatever you want to know about LRB Aquatics. Well, here we are. We are live. Hello, hello. Let me go ahead and jump into live chat here. And uh, you guys know the deal. If... I do not see questions. I will just ramble on until then. So uh, if you want me to answer those questions and not ramble, always best to ask questions. And outside in aquatics, thanks for reminding people about putting the question marks behind it so I can see that it's a question because sometimes it gets a little busy in here and me having a speed read everything, it gets to be a bit much so if you do have the question marks that definitely helps aaron gelati says how much is a membership so the memberships vary it goes from a dollar on up so it doesn't take much to get into the front door or maybe it's two dollars i thought it was a dollar it's like a dollar or two but thank you outside in aquatics for mentioning it all right all right all right to uh, run over, I actually forgot my phone at the barn. And that's why I was just a couple minutes late here. But we did get all set up super fast in the plant room now. I do have exciting uh, news. If you see right here, are kind of hard to... This thing. That's a tank. So, there's a little space over here. I think Lady LRV is going to let us put a fish tank in. So, hopefully, hopefully... We'll get a fish tank in here sooner and later. I didn't expect it. I came back from the AGA, and her and Wesley had done that together, which, you know, that makes a dad proud when his son wants to get into tanks. And now Wesley says he doesn't remember it. I remember you telling me all about it. But anyways, I did, I did get some fish from the AGA that I think will be perfect to go in there. Now, I didn't do get a whole lot from the AGA, which is the Aquarium Gardener Association, which is for, like, plant aquarium plant nerds. That is the place. The AGA, if you guys love aquarium plant, plants, like, it doesn't get any better than that. So, uh, I did get a couple plants. I didn't get a whole lot, so I'm not going to make a whole separate video out of it. I may come up with some footage that I had. It was uh, really hard to really film a whole lot because it was like back-to-back -back talks but I did learn a lot from it and if you guys never heard of the AGA and you love aquarium plants definitely definitely recommend you guys checking them out Robert Johnston says what pH KH GH and TDS would you aim for with clown loaches for long-term health my tap is 8.2 17 degrees KH, 15 to 22 degrees. GH and TDS is around 355 S76. So, yeah, that is uh, hard water, definitely. Because it is mostly... I mean, you got a good balance of KH and GH. It's kind of right in between. You got like a little 50-50 going on there. So, your TDS more or less helps tell you a bit of... Like, this part's... It's a bit of your KH and GH put together. So if you put your numbers of your KH and your GH together, they're actually pretty close. And then um, as far as what would be best for them, I've kept many clown loaches in that type of water without any problem. So I wouldn't really find it to be an issue with them. And they are always happy and healthy. And I actually used to grow them up when they were smaller. And I would sell them to the fish store after they would get real big. That was back when I was like so anti-snail. And I would use those to clean up my snails. And they would always give me more back at the pet, pet store because of the size of them. Than what I spent on them. And then they just did work for me, so it worked out. Branton Light can't like Branton Lightcap says breeding pygmy cories in a guppy fry grow out tank to save space. Doable or nah? Um, you know, I 
you could. Because, like, the guppy fry, they do sleep on the bottom, but pygmy quarries, they're not going to do much. And then the fry, you know, they could eat on the eggs. You may not get much breeding out of the quarries. Anytime you're breeding, you just want to go ahead and uh, just give them a species only. Because it's like either one grows out or the other. And sometimes neither. <clears throat> um, let's see. Johnny Best says, I enjoyed your talk with Father Fish on no filter live food cultures. Thanks. I've been battling with this topic for ages. Yes. Well, awesome. Glad that could help you out, Johnny. I saw your comment and thank you so much for uh, making that comment and makes me feel good that I can help you out with that because I know sometimes it's not easy to think about it all and sometimes it could just be that one little thing that's just like blocking you and you know finding that information is always gold and thanks to father fish he actually put a nice video out of like a it was like a mashup of that live stream him and i did where we talked about algae detritus and all kinds of stuff it's pretty good video wish i had an editor like that or something for all my stuff but you know i still have troubles with letting go of that whole editing thing ZBD Harper says, hey, Lucas, if I go with dirt method, would a filter make the water cloudy to the mulm, due to mulm, due to mulm? So, um, not really. It depends on, so the best thing to do, okay, so say you have a dirted tank and you have a filter. So when you put the dirt in there, you let it settle before you turn the filter on. Then also, if you get the filter to where, I don't know what kind of filter you have, sometimes they'll hit the surface. If it's like a hang on the back and it does hit the bottom and it hits the surface, maybe put a rock there where it hits or plenty of plants. That way it doesn't kick the detritus around a whole lot. Bring it over time, it's gonna consistently keep that detritus out of that space and uh, it should self-clean itself. Now, if you do plan on moving plants and you have a filter, take the or turn the filter off and then move your plants. And then you're gonna wanna give it, like sometimes it takes 24 hours, but usually it doesn't take very long. It can only take like an hour or so for your dust to settle in your dirted tank. And with your filter off, it lets it settle. If you keep your filter on, it just kicks it around. It's just constantly turning particles into the water. They get mashed up, they get smaller and all that stuff. And it's just best to have it turned off. And you, as long as the filter is dirty too, I would not clean the filter before you do that because the dirtier the filter is, the better it will help clean out those little microns because it actually works as like a micron, like a scrubber for all the small, small parts. Walking Tall says, what are you selling the rare crypts for? So the Nuri, I think the Nuri Rosa Maiden is 15 right now. The original price is 25 which I've had those things grown for years. And then the Huteroy Crib, I've got the smaller ones, which I think I was doing for 10, and then the bigger ones, which I'm doing for 15. Which usually those are more too. But since I'm tearing down the pond right now, I'm stacking them deep and selling them cheap, as some of you guys have saw. Because I'm gonna have to move them around. I'm definitely gonna plant some more out. I have another uh, mat of Nuri Rosen Maiden, but I think I'm just going to let this whole one that's in the pond go. <sighs> Even though I'm like, uh, I really, that was like, I think that's actually one of the hardest parts for me with tearing this pond down at the moment is getting into those cribs because those cribs have been sitting there for so long. I was trying to get that whole pound, pond to be a whole mat of that huteroy, which the huteroy crib is like a bull lated crib, which gets those dimply leaves. If you guys have never seen those, those are really cool. 
should have got my microphone. I always forget my microphone anymore. Or I'm not used to it. But yeah, it was a... Uh, man, I did not want to tear into those. But I am... I got to do it. No choice. Vi Boy says, How often do you feed Daphne to fish? So, um, it usually depends if I've got like a ton of it and I just got to move it around and feed it to something to keep the numbers from crashing. Then uh, I will just feed it to whomever. But if I'm just trying to trigger some breeding or maybe I got a finicky fish that is used to live food and not quite used to processed food, then um, I'll use it for that. But usually really good for trigger and breeding. That's the most hard time. It's not the staple diet. Staple diet I just run through with the Tetracolor Tropical Granules. Which I did in a record amount of time. I guess, uh, what was it, Wednesday. Right before I got on my members live. Did it in like nine minutes. Which isn't bad considering how many hundreds of aquariums I have. Paul C says, hi Lucas, TDS in my tank is 460, 260 ppm. I do daily 10% water changes with 33 ppm water. Why is the TDS not coming down? So... You got 460 and then you cut it down to 260. Like, I don't get what you're saying with the 460 to 260. Because it's got to be either one of those numbers. That's a big range. Or is your water coming in at different ranges like that? That would be even weirder. Not often. I mean, it's not completely weird. Like, during certain seasons, it can change. So, say if there was a lot of rain, you're going to have a lot more saturation and a lot more rainwater in it. So, sometimes it can tend to come out softer. Now, if you're in a dry season and things are more saturated, you can have a higher TDS. Yeah, no, it doesn't work like that. No, water doesn't separate like oil with like layers of density and TDS. I know. You would think, but it doesn't. And uh, with 33 ppm, if you're cutting it with that, I mean, it's not a big change. Plus, I don't know what you're feeding or if you're adding anything else that could be contributing to it. But usually food doesn't move it much, if at all. And really, if anything, some of your plants should be absorbing it as well. It's just you got to think about when you got over-mineralized water, that hard water. You're, that's like when you're just adding that in. It's just adding more mineralization. Um, it can add up, but yeah, maybe it's just not small enough to make a difference in the way that it's being cut. Now I can see if you got 460 coming out of the tap and then you cut it with the 33 ppm and it drops to 260, like that totally makes sense. And that's a good TDS. Excuse me. Uh, Memphis Mommy Mars says, TGIF, LRB Aquatics and all. Question, what's your opinion on aquarium salt and freshwater tank and effects on plants? So a lot of people have used it. I don't know. It always felt weird to me with salts and plants. But at the same time, you know, there is a lot of salts that plants do like. So I think aquarium salt is one of those safe salts. It's not like table salt or nothing. But uh, I personally don't use it. I probably get enough of it through my water being here in Florida. Even up north, though, I didn't. Well, I did have to use it to remineralize if I was using my RO system, but with my tap water, I didn't. Um, but yeah, I personally don't use it. A lot of people have, and they like it. Like, GH Booster is nothing but a type of salt. Um, 
Hope you're doing well too, Shady Grady. Fisk Calderson, thank you so much for the $2 super chat. Very, very helpful right now. Really appreciate it. Trying to save up for tubs and ponds, but then my van's got troubles right now, so. LRBAquatics.com. <laughs> Uh, it would be helpful though. I'm trying to get that van fixed. And these ponds and tubs. Especially now I know I can get those 110 gallon tubs at Tractor Supply for cheap. It's got me frothing. But thank you, Fisk. I appreciate that super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And remind me to plug the website because I'm not always the best at that. And the guy that was asking me about the red, rare cribs, he was asking me, I do have it on the website as well, lrbaquatics.com, that's the place to go. Should have mentioned that. Uh, da, 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 da. Dane Bolton says, ordered Daphnia from you recently. I already had Moina, and I'm pretty sure that your Magna got into one of my Moina cultures. Is this an issue? I have four Moina cultures and split the Magna in two. So, I mean, if you already got a separate cultures, I mean, obviously it shouldn't be an issue because you can always make more cultures or new cultures of those if need be. But personally, I don't know. I don't think the Moina and Magna battle. Uh, the only reason why I like the Magna over the Moina too is just for the fact that the Magna can have Daphnia as small as the Moina because that Daphnia doesn't come and start off at magnum size. Like, it's got to get to that point. So there's so many more ranges with the Magna. So what I would say is go ahead and keep them in the multiple culture. You may like that better. But also I would say keep your separate cultures because... You never know. Find out what works best for you. So we all know in this hobby, you know, what works for best for one person is not the best for them. And uh, you got options. You got options. Matt Hoffman, what's up, my man? Says, Lucas, what are the breeding plans for the 110-gallon tubs? Or is that a secret? Throwing some rainbows out there. So there is a lot I want to throw in those tubs. Right now is just trying to figure out like, so the three I have, I don't need, I really only members know about this. Honestly, so, uh, <clears throat> we'll keep that for a members only. But I'd tell you what, ask me, yeah, on the next members only live, or just in a members chat, and uh, I'll let you know. But yeah, right now it's a secret. There's definitely a lot of things I want to throw at them. Sagetti Nona says, are the crypts on the site the pond crypts? Yes, they are, Sagetti. Besides, like, the, as far as the Nuri and the Huteroy, the red metallic is in a whole different tank, 20 gallon, just full of it. Which I gotta clear that out for rainbow fish because I can't have a crypt tank with rainbows because I will never get them moved out of there. Saya Llewellyn says, Memphis, Mommy, I use a little bit of aquarium salt to remineralize my soft dechlorinated tap water along with a pinch of baking soda. Yeah, that's a really, really good way to uh, help add in some minerals for your shrimp, fish, plants, all the above. It's the good stuff. And Shrimp Sanctuary, thank you. Thank you again for your continued support, Shrimp Sanctuary. I really appreciate you. Says, did a vid on a box underground filter with soil as media, which I have moved away to sponge hang on the back many years ago for carotene and shrimp breeding. Your thoughts on it? So, with the underground filter, I the only thing I worry about is babies getting into it and not being able to get out. But, you know, they're fairly smart. That is a big cavity. I think it will change and adapt over time depending on how much mulm is in it. And as long as you don't have to worry about like worms or anything like that, 
or any kind of parasitic things and you've got clean stuff and you know you have clean stuff going in a tank, then I think it could be very beneficial because you do have a lot of mulm and detritus and lively things like a living substrate. That is literally a very living substrate. And not to mention all the hides and caves for babies and stuff. I don't know. It would be interesting. I don't really know if there's been much discussion, at least that I've heard, with underground filters and shrimp. And so many people with the caridina shrimp, too, they swear if you touch them, <laughs> if you touch a caridina shrimp with detritus, it will just murder them. So, in my opinion and in my experience, that's not the case. I've got plenty of mulm in my um, caridina shrimp, and they still breed. I think the biggest trick with Caridina is really just getting enough food around. Like, they're really triggered by pollen. Which I think pollen's kind of like that Daphnia thing. Where Daphnia signals to fish that it's time to breed. I think pollen does the same thing for those Caridina shrimp. I know a bee pollen is real popular for that. And uh, I think that's really the biggest trigger just to get them things to breed. And keeping them cool enough. They do not like the heat. But thank you, thank you so much, Shrimp Sanctuary, for that. It'll be interesting, too. Like, let me know what you find out down the road. Or, like, I'll be watching. Maybe I'll catch the video on YouTube. Every once in a while, YouTube will throw one of your videos in front of me. I like to check them out, see what you're doing. Aaron Gelowetti. Gelow I, I Man, I swear I said it right the first time. <laughs> um, says, how do you become a member? Never done it before. So, on the channel, where it has, I believe it's the subscribe button, there's a join button. You can touch that button, and then... That should pop up the members option. And if you're on, I think, iOS, it's like weird and makes it hard for you. So you can actually go into the description and I do have the iOS tag for that. But that would be awesome if you became a member. I'd, I would definitely appreciate it. Trying to get it up there, get things going on that membership. And Joey definitely helped King of DIY last week with that big shout out to him for that and then all my other members that have been hanging on for all this time like i could like they have helped me so much i'm glad to be able to give them more time lately um shrimp sanctuary again with a super chat five dollar super chat says does a soil require flow over it to buffer water parameters or is it through contact with the water so with the soil, the acidic soil, the way it really works is it's more of a leaching. So technically the water doesn't have to flow over it for it to leach. Because it, it's, le it's leaching acidity. And that's what makes that soil good is because it does have that humic acidity that helps with the shrimp molts and them being able to have a soft enough mold to break themselves through it. Um, so yeah, I don't think it requires any flow over it to buffer the water parameter. And if anything, that buffer would really kind of be sitting down towards the bottom. But thank you again, Shrimp Sanctuary, for that. I really appreciate that. And all right, got a new member here, my boy Brandon. What's up, my dude? Actually ran across your old footage from the Triple Crown not long ago, scrolling through my phone trying to find some media. And it was a good time being able to visit you. And I loved your setups, those rainbow shiner, that rainbow shiner setup especially was super cool. I did a little video, a little mini fish room tour for uh, Brandon at one point. If you type in LRB Brandon Fishroom, should pop up. 
A real neat setups. I'm kicking myself in the butt right now, though. Because at the AGA, God, they had the most beautiful group of rainbow shiners. <sighs> and I forgot all about them because there was just so much going on. And we were kind of in a hurry because we had a long way to go to get home, to get there in time. And, uh, yeah, I kind of missed those. But one day, hopefully one day I'll get to those. But that almost happened. And Lady Diane, member for 14 months. And not just any member, but she is in the top class. Primo members with a diamond membership says, This is aging me when I send this. Oh, well. It's aging you when you send that? What's that even mean? I don't even know what that means. I guess time is always passing, right? Well, Lady Diane, thank you always for your support. You have been absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing. And Aquarium Domain, thank you for becoming a member. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. I saw your, uh, I got a little bit of your last video as well. So your plants are growing good for you. You got lots of tank space and places to put fish now it's pretty amazing like i really hope you did mention stopping by sometime i do hope i get to do that that would be amazing you guys don't know who aquarium domain is he's been building all these big old plywood tanks or just like drool over Chia Pet says, how does mulm change nitrates? So, okay. <laughs> um, when it comes to fish tanks, and especially cyclic keepers, they wrestle with this so hard. I don't know why they wrestle with this so hard, but it's almost like they like to wrestle with this so hard. The issue of nitrates. So, for like us plant keepers, we actually dose nitrates into our tanks. Now, often these cichlid keepers, they want to keep their tanks really clean. They, like, vacuum clean everything. They make sure the filter's all clean. They make sure that water's spotless. And it's hard to get rid of nitrates when you do that. Because you don't have that beneficial bacteria built up to keep those nitrates down. So if you have that beneficial bacteria, it will eat that stuff up. Same with if you have plants, it will eat it up even faster. But the more of that stuff you have, the more of it it will eat. So if you have these big fish causing big waste in a system that doesn't have any plants, or hardly any beneficial bacteria, like down in the substrate or in the rocks or wherever in the filter, then yeah, you're gonna have nitrate problems, you're gonna have ammonia problems, you're gonna have all kinds of problems. But if these guys would let their tanks get a little dirtier, I'm not saying it's gotta look like, all oh, you can't see through it, it's gotta be all grimy and this and that and other. You could always clean the windows. Always clean the windows. But let your filter get a little dirty. Let, let that tank get some age. Let it go through the diatome process. Let it get a little green algae maybe here or there. And that green, especially if it's hair algae, it ain't gonna lot, lot last long in a cichlid tank to begin with. And you know, there's a lot of ways to go around it too. You can plant cichlid tanks. I've seen so many monster cichlid tanks planted as well. So the whole debate of, oh, well, it's just his fish that he can keep this way and all that blah, 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 CO2 or without any filter and this, that, and other and no water changes. It's not because my fish are small. I could do it with big fish too. Granted, if I had a big enough tank that I would feel comfortable about putting big fish in. Most of these guys all have bigger tanks than I do. My biggest tank is a 75. And then my bigger pond thing, that's a retirement tank. Hey, kitty. So, yeah, I don't know. Those who are new to the channel, but those who have been following me, 
or as, as far as those who are new, you probably don't know what I'm really ranting on about, but those who've been following me, I think you guys know what I'm ranting about. Because a lot of people don't quite understand what I do here. A lot of them try to figure it out. A lot of them have been figuring it out. But a lot of them still want to battle me on it. And you know what I say? I'm ready for it. Bring it. Randy Coach says, Lucas, I'm interested in getting four pairs of Epilates de Gadi Monrovia. Do you have any more than just a two pair? Um, hey, babe, can you go check on that rack and see how many male de Gettys I have? Um, is that one in the bedroom? Yes, please. We'll see. I think I may only have the two pair, but there's a potential that I could possibly scrounge up two more pair i don't know though i'll have to make a uh a text to somebody for that. supreme leader army says what is lady diane's favorite fish that's a good question supreme leader i like that question i think we all i know i would like to know John's Creatures, my guy. Thank you, thank you so much for the $10 super chat, John's Creatures. Always good to see you in here, my man. It says, thank you, Lucas, for everything you've done and still do on Fish Hobby. Learned so much from you. Try to catch up. Try to catch you on live, but as you know, life is a hustle if you want to be someone. That is for sure. It's a grind, my guy. It is a grind. If you really want to move and shake, you got to move and shake. And John, I appreciate that appreciation because it goes a long way. Because uh, <clears throat> I've been doing this a long time. I would like to get to the road to 100K. You know, it would just make me feel like a real YouTuber. I think I was about to change my name to Road to 100K instead of Affordable Aquariums, but I don't know what's going to happen between that. And I figured I'd have to be like that for like a long time, so I probably won't. But who knows, maybe one of these days I'm just moving and shaking and grinding and hustling to get there like you, my brother. But thank you, thank you so much, John's Creatures. I appreciate you. Definitely, definitely appreciate you. Henry Figaro says, who is the oldest member here? That's a good question. That is a good question. I don't know what you have in here. You, did you see the uh, the Getty? Yeah, it <clears throat> has three containers. It says the Getty M or the yes. Getty F. How many M's were there? There were three that said M. Okay, so I may have three pair. And you had one container that had two female stickers. Yeah, on. yeah. And then one yeah, that no. just said DAG with no M or S. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know why I had just one with DAG. I think yeah. that was a male. So there's a potential I might have four? Possibly. I might have four. I tell you what. If I have four, I'll check it out after this live. Hopefully I remember. Then I will change it to four. Aaron! Galodi! You made it to the membership. Welcome. Welcome, brother. Glad you could find it, and I appreciate the support. And if I'm missing any of you guys' questions, sorry, I'm trying my best here. Vincent, what's up, my guy? He's been commenting a lot. I've been appreciating all his comments lately. It says, Endler's getting skinny after giving birth. One week, no change. Don't see the telltale red dangles. Dangler's treat. Thank for parasites of feed more than three times a week. <clears throat> um, so if they're getting like skinny, like wasting disease, skinny kind, and you don't see like the red things like, um, what are you, calamanus worms? I would say probably hit them with some general cure. Usually helps with that wasting disease. And sometimes it can just be bad genetics. But not usually, and that's usually just like one. If you see multiples, then yeah, I don't know. Could potentially be parasites or they're not happy with the water. If they were like clamping their fins 
or maybe they had a birthing issue because sometimes birthing issues do happen with fish. So it all, I don't know how many antlers you have, if you have a colony or just a pair, or, but that can all depend on like studying the group, the herd, to see what's really going on. But I hope your fish pulls through for you. Shiner regret, right? Totally. Totally got that rainbow shiner regret right now. God. You know how many times I've thought about that since that's happened? Uh, Brayton Lightcap says, Have you played with the new Papa sn Snails yet? Getting some blueberries Sunday and plan on keeping them in my shrimp tank since they're more of a biofilm feeder. I'm pumped. Heard somebody talking about blueberry snails. Um, just briefly, I think it was Chia Pet maybe, or Henry Figaro, I can't remember. But, um, I was thinking that it was like Blue Ram Sorns, and I was like, oh, I've seen Blue Ram Sorns. I've got Blue Ram Sorns, like, floating around my fish room. But I haven't seen, like, is it a new snail from Papua New Guinea? I don't think I've seen it. I don't think I've seen it. They're more of a biofilm feeder. I'm pumped. It's interesting. So do they eat plants? Do they just eat biofilm? Because that could be good because that biofilm, what happens if you don't do water changes, is usually if that biofilm ages out, then it can, uh, you know, it's like a Petri dish for algae and other things to grow on. Chia Pet says, Lady Ellerby, how much of a plant order would it take for him to go? Would rather wait to pick up plants as the male kills my stuff. Oh, to what? Go to the meeting tomorrow? Oh, it's too late for me to even go to that meeting. I still got to edit this weekend's videos. There is no way. I just ain't enough time in the day right now. No, I, I appreciate that, Vincent. I'm appreciating that you're binging and learning on the channel because it's what I made this channel for, my man. There's a lot of good information. Not just from like what I've been doing here, but what I've even done in the old house because I was doing a lot of this in the old house before I even moved. That's why you see a lot more YouTubers and stuff trying to do this stuff. Asaya Llewellyn says, will you have any more blue platinum Mayuki rice fish available soon? So I do have some growing out. They're not real big. And then I've got some fry that are growing out. I don't know how long they'll be. If you don't mind them small, like, yeah, you big, then uh, send us an email. We can hook you up. I'll make a special order for you. You've been an awesome supporter for so long. Dane Stevenson says, what are some good stem plants for outdoor pond in Northern Ohio? You know, uh, I'll tell you one plant that works good anywhere and everywhere, and that's Valcinaria. Kind of a stem plant, but not really. It's more of a runner. I would say any of most of your Luigias and really, a lot of your Otalias will do good. It's just you got to be careful burning them in the sun. Like, they can't get too much sunlight. And then you end up growing more algae than plants. So they need, like, rest to grow. Plants actually get most of their re or growth through rest. And than like in the direct light. Henry Figaro says, Lady LRB, any new plant videos soon? I know she was taking some shots of some videos. I don't know what she was going to do with those. Are you planning on making videos, Lady LRB? Yes, this is my last week working six days. 
Oh, so he says, yes, this is my last week working six days. She has been working hard. She's been working long hours. And, you know, six days a week, that is never fun. At all. And Lady Diane, come on, work finger. Get in there, finger. Come on. Really? Cleek. There we go, because they put it right on the edge of the phone. Lady and Diane, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. It says, show your support. Smash the like. Thank you. Well, thank you, lady. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She is an amazing person. And mod. You've been a mod for... For the longest time, you were like my only mod. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Road to 100K, right? Wouldn't that be something? I don't think enough people believe me with my no filter stuff and think I'm just crazy. Uh, who knows? Maybe we can get more people to go crazy with us. Woohoohoo! <laughs> Uh, it's a new blueberry snow. I'm gonna have to look those up. For sure. Oh, Lady Diane's favorites are Rainbows are my favorites. Angels is close second than the Vietnamese Cardinal Minnows. Is that like the Mountain Minnow? Especially the long fins. Chris Lockup found the snail. Okay. And yeah, from Papua New Guinea. Okay. Interesting. Richard Schneeberg says, Lucas, I see you paint your racks black. Does that help prevent mold? So I do paint them with exterior paint. I want to say that, well, it will help keep mold off of them. Um, really, if you want to help prevent mold, you just got to work on your humidity and make sure you don't keep it too humid. And let it dry out every once in a while. You know, at first, with my wooden barn and all that wood in there, I was kind of skeptic to, like, oh, how's this going to act with all the humidity of all these tanks and things? And I was thinking, oh, crap, like, they're going to become mold magnets. Because I did have some wood out in the storage that I have, but it's not climate control, and it did grow some mold on it. But like in the barn, the fact that it's all climate controlled and then on dry days, I can just open it up and the wood actually helps fluctuate with holding that uh, moisture in so you can dry that wood out. But yeah, I don't necessarily paint those to hold the mold off of it it definitely probably could help depending on your situation but if you're growing mold i would say you're already kind of in a situation to the point that you need to get your humidity under control and you definitely want to clean that stuff up because you really shouldn't have a moldy fish room like it can happen if you get a lot of con condensation in moist areas then you just want to combat that as needed but the big reason I paint my racks is just so they look good. They'll last longer. If I get them wet, it's not such an issue. Kind of waterproof them more. Alright. Uh, Stan Pittman says they are a live-bearing snail. Interesting. The dude keeps wanting me to put you guys in timeout. Chia Pet says, is it worth going tomorrow? 9 a.m. AM is stupid early for me to get there. How long is it like normal ending time? So the way I look at it, honestly, with those uh, club auctions, the annual club auction there, they always run the donated and the farm flip fish, the fish farm flip bags at the beginning when the most people are there. So if you want most of the hobbyist stuff, just come later and you'll get the better deals but at the same time you never know what's going to be there and sometimes people bump things 
If you're not really looking for anything specific but deals, I would just come in later. Um, I, hope you're in live chat. I so wish I could be there. I so wish I could be there. Oh, I'm not in live chat, I don't think. Yeah, but I never answered it. Thanks, so, Lady LRB. The Super Sunfish says, what is the best way to grow culture or microfauna in a tank? Best way to do it is no filter. Then you got to start off with whatever culture you're going to be using and then be able to feed that culture. But it's always, always best done in a no filter. Some people do use air stones, but I personally would not. Henry Figaro, thank you so much for the $5 super chat, Henry. Appreciate you, buddy. Says, thank you for all your hard work. Don't forget to take time off and have fun with the family. Lady LRB, you need time off too. Yeah. Kind of sucks though. I mean, she has to work those days. It's not like she gets an option. It's just a season of her job. But I think, yeah, she's got like this one last beat to do the six day thing. So that'll be good. And I always try to balance my family time in between everything that I'm doing here. And thankfully, Lady LRB actually works from home. So she's just right here, although She's working all these days. She's at least home with us, which is very nice. She gets to take her breaks and stuff with us around. <laughs> Lady Diane, are you poking me in the eye? Are you poking me in the eye? You're so funny. So I was trying to point. No, it was just they stick it right on the edge there. So it's hard to put my finger on that sometimes. Earthling2989 says, recently made my fish room filterless and just heating the room. What's the coolest temp you recommend keeping tropical fish? I personally would not go underneath 70. I mean, you can go underneath 72, you can go underneath 70, I've been at 68, even less before, but not ideally. Like, when I have my AC on, I put it at 74, and when I got my heater on, I put it at 76. That's about the median for everything. Now, if you're doing, like, just carrying a shrimp or just doing shrimp, you would want to keep it, like, in the cooler range. Say if you wanted to get into like discus, that's a whole different story. You're going to want to really warm it up. But for most everything in between, the median 70s is where to go. And I do like to let mine fluctuate. Because that way my fish and shrimp aren't weak. Uh, Mr. Firemouth says, will a yellow bristlenose male placo <clears throat> breed with a male galaxy bristlenose placo? I mean, if they're both bristlenose, I would think so. I personally don't know, though. I will see in the chat for any confirmations here. Johnny Best says, what will advice a newbie train the Lucas Snow Filter Aquarium style? So, I actually, I need to make a video of this because... Really, when it comes to people new getting into the hobby, doing the whole no filter natural method is a lot, lot better than what is sold and told. The only problem is, is it doesn't get told. Because what gets told is what gets sold. Therein lies the problem. So it's really up to a lot of you guys to help link these new people over to my direction you know if you know somebody who's getting into aquariums or trying to figure things out um that's about all we can do is to try to help them find these different avenues of keeping things more natural more easy more simple and doing the no filter but most of these people who are just getting into the hobby 
they're gonna be buying that filter from the store and that store is gonna be selling them anything. I know a lot of stores actually, they don't pressure like they used to, which is good. But then there's also becomes a lot of confusion of what I do need and what I don't need and then all that stuff that comes within it. So it's really is just whether they can find me or not. But I do need to make a video that specifically tries to target them a little more throughout time here. Hopefully sooner and later I'll get to that. <clears throat> I feel like I've just been trying to keep up right now. Dean Stevenson, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Appreciate you, Dean. Says, hey, Lucas, did you get my email? I'm putting my GF... P copper male with my albino female this weekend. I'll trade you 20 eggs for Daphnia culture. Um, I did see that email and thank you for reminding me because it was like I opened it and then I had, I think I got it in a tab to where I was going to go back to it because I've been so swamped with things. Um, yeah, I would definitely, I think I'll go with that trade because I would just like to try to hatch out some axolotl eggs. I think that would be kind of cool. Oh, yeah, I'll hit you back up. Uh, let's see. Johnny Best says, 20 long and 10 gallon well seasoned aquariums. I keep fighting with myself. Turn off this filter or follow the Lucas no filter style. But I am programmed to run filters. I know, man. It's not always the easiest to unplug from the matrix. Henry Figaro says, Lady LRB, will you ever do a video on how you ship plants? I don't know, maybe, but we got to get that terrarium video of her sooner and later because it's looking really nice. I think you guys would love it. Because it does have a little bit of water in it. Mario Valesco says, Hey, Lucas, what rainbow fish tolerate cooler temperatures? I know the Dobeli. Kangaroo Creeks do, and that's only because Gary Lang told me that not long ago. Um, but besides that, I think a lot of them can tend to tolerate the cooler temps. Just how cool are you talking? Like, if you get down to 68, they, they'll do all right. But once you go below that, then, I don't know, you're playing dangerous games. And, you know, some will kind of breed in those cooler temps, some won't. I can't really rattle off all those off. I don't really remember all that. That's a Gary Lang kind of question. We should try to get him back on the channel at some point again. Really hope that he has what he's supposed to have for me here soon. I think he does. And if it does, I'm going to be the happiest. Happiest. Super Sunfish says, how do I safely transfer my tank to no filter? So, I would do it <clears throat> right, like, as the light comes on, unplug it, then watch it. And if you see any signs, like you're going to see different behavior, like your fish are going to be more playful with each other because it's going to make them feel like they got off that treadmill, depending on <clears throat> how, what, how active your filter really is. And even if you do have a filter, if you don't mind a filter, I mean, there is nothing wrong with filters. As long as you're not like putting your fish on this treadmill that's just like they don't get any rest from your filter or say your filter is noisy and you know fish feel vibrations fish no noise so it can become more comforting when they don't have those vibrations and noises so it's really all up to you you know whether you want the filter or not but if you do want to go no filter and go down a rabbit hole you've never been down the best way to do it is just to do it there's no special trick that you have to do and it does work better if you don't do it i would say don't do it before a water change just because i think in a dirtier tank it's better because 
Um, your filter is holding a lot of that beneficial bacteria for your tank. And when you take that beneficial bacteria away from your tank, and if you don't have enough to replace it, or at least some in the tank to work for that. So you don't want like absolute sterile tank. Granted, your biologically sound water should be enough. But yeah, I've never had an issue with it. I just unplugged them, took them out of hundreds of tanks when I did have them. I never had an issue. Besides with my barbs, my mascara barbs did need some kind of current or flow to go through them. Just because they are bigger river fish. Vincent, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Appreciate you, Vincent. Says, got my tub from tractor supply company per you now what to do i do plants fish kind of thinking platies um 400 miles north of you predation prevention um so i mean if you're thinking platies you're thinking platies i would say if that's what you want to do there's some really cool platies out there and you know like Platties are super fun for summer tubbing. And they're pretty, like, hardy. They're not, like, real cold hardy, but they are pretty hardy. Like, they'll be able to manage the cold nights and stuff. And then predation prevention depends on what color of platies you get. So if you get, like, a more neutral color that you're probably not going to see very well in your tub... They will get less likely to be predated, but if you get something real flashy, then, you know, floating plants help. It depends on where you put the tub to, like what would feel comfortable coming up that close to predate on a small fish. Also, do you have bodies of water around you? Because most of the time, uh, these birds won't bother with something small and they would rather go to the bigger water with the bigger fish and get a bigger meal so they don't have to work so hard for it they do make motion sensors that if something does come to it it will actually shoot water in that direction so it can deter either raccoons or herons i've had many raccoons come into my tubs but they don't do anything besides like <laughs> make a muck out of it where they'll like kick up some plants and dirt but they never really they may get a fish but they don't really take out all the fish so herons you really gotta worry about then if you want to you can put netting over it but i'm not a big fan of netting myself just because of how it looks and um yeah i would say those are the main predation preventions and stuff do, 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 do. But thank you, thank you again for the support. Appreciate it, Vincent. Asaya Llewellyn says, I run about half my tanks with air sponge and the rest no filter. Yeah, see? Sometimes you do a little half and half, a little combo. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Like, a lot of people think I'm, like, anti-filter because I don't use filters, but I'm not anti-filter. Same with water changes. Although I don't do a whole lot of water changes, I still did spend a ton of money on a water change system and a ton of time to build it. To where, at least if I want to do them, I can do them. Henry Figaro says, Lucas, can I have Crips together with the mascara barbs? Do you think they will eat them like the guppy grass? Uh, they might nibble on it. They might nibble on them. I got that soft relief. Might be a new flavor for them too. Yeah, I think they would probably eat them. Now you could try to outgrow them to where they want to eat them, but it's a little harder to do with crips since they're not like the fastest growers like guppy grass are. Or is. Uh, da, 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 da. Tony Bess says, I took your advice on rock piles, two to three inch rocks for shrimp keeping. Thank you for giving and sharing a wealth of knowledge and hobby. Well, you're welcome. It's 
It's amazing how far a little rock pile will go. All right, I'm gonna do a power scroll here. Flood City Fish Keeper says, do you have a direct contact to Joey DIY? I tried to email the Fence and Fury website for my phone. I can't see what I'm typing from my laptop. I can autofill the name and email, but not type. So yeah, on the Fence and Fury, there is a email there where you can contact him. I would say that's the best way to contact him. I can't really give you his information. You can try contacting him on like his socials. I think Instagram, he fairly good at answering. I don't know. There's a lot of socials out there. He's a busy guy. But it never hurts to try to reach out that way too. Say if you can't get it through that uh, site. But I would say get through that site. That would be the best way to get to it because I know he's putting a lot of his attention towards that right now. So Getty Nona says, raccoons hit my tubs hard last year. I hope they forgot about them over the winter. <laughs> oh, Sagetti, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry I'm laughing, but it just reminds me of every year, this one mom would have three babies. She would have three babies every year. The mom, I would never catch her in there, but the babies would always be up there playing around in them. I don't know. They were kind of cute to me. They tore it up a little bit, but the dust settled and plants did all right. Grew back out. And it's kind of hard to keep those raccoons out, too. Turing's Enigma. Why did you stop singing your beautiful song? It was my woman's weekly fix and gained, the major brownie, gained me major brownie points. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, maybe I'll try to do that next time. I did actually think about doing that this time, and uh, I was kind of running late as it was, and it has been a while. It has been a while. Who knows? Maybe I'll break it out one day, because you never know what's going to happen around here. I like to keep it extra, I guess. But uh, I'm going to hop off here. We are over the hour mark. My arms are tired. It's been killing me just scrolling here because I was just pumping them up too much. Actually, I haven't been able to get my pumps. It's like just my tendons. Pulling on my tendons more than anything. But anyways, it's more of a me problem than a you problem. But I appreciate you all. I hope you guys all have a great weekend. Until next time, everybody. Peace. Have a great one. Do 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 do